It's the middle of January while I'm recording this. I thought I'd take you outside. This is Ontario, Canada, and at least the ground's not covered in snow. It was about 24 hours ago, but still, it's January. And January comes every single year. And at least here in Canada, it's cold. And today, damp and wet. And it always happens in the middle of winter. I've still got a smile on my face. I'm thinking, hmm, tonight looks like a honey of a night for a barbecue. But I saw something this morning that quite frankly, rankled me a little bit. I looked over at the photocopier and somebody had printed something. I made a copy of it. It says, surveys show that movies can help Canadians beat the Blue Monday Blues. Okay. I thought, I think I've heard of that before. Blue Monday, but let me be sure. So I Googled it and I found this. Blue Monday is a name given to a day in January, typically the third Monday of the month, reported to be the most depressing day of the year for countries in the Northern Hemisphere. Okay, so let me see, that's what I thought it was. Let me see if I've got this straight. So we have now manufactured, as human beings, created an idea that we're supposed to be depressed at a certain time of the year. That's step one, it gets even better. Now we've got other companies saying, you're supposed to be depressed. You are depressed, but you won't be depressed if you buy something from me. That's just terrific. This is the kind of stuff that, quite frankly, I'm sorry to be blunt, but pisses me off. The kind of thing that I used to buy into, that I used to believe, that I used to choose that I had to participate in. But <laughs> if you want to be depressed, it's your choice. You can always choose another way, but I can already see it with Blue Monday, the hashtag going around, people racing to identify who's responsible, anybody but themselves, for how they feel. I'll tell you a quick story, because I don't want to diminish the idea of depression. I know what that feels like. So years ago, when I was going through the process of separation and eventual divorce, my whole life, I felt like at the time, was turned completely upside down. All of the labels that I had attached to my identity, it felt like they all went away. It felt like pretty much overnight. I was on two different antidepressant medications at that time. None of that is a part of my life anymore, but I remember at that time, I thought I needed it just to be able to function. So I know what that feels like. So while that process was going on, and I was at one of the most fragile stages of my life, I looked around and I thought about it thinking, how am I supposed to behave here? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to act? And what am I supposed to think? When everything has just gone right to crap, it felt like. So I thought about what I'd seen from some friends and colleagues in my peer group. I thought about the stereotypes that have been perpetuated on TV and in movies and things like that. Not all, but many. And what immediately came to mind, and here was the story that I, I thought of first, was my soon-to-be ex-wife at the time and I were supposed to battle. We were supposed to argue a lot, be enemies. Well, and then the guy that she got together with and eventually married, replacing me in a way, well, he and I are supposed to be even bigger enemies, right? And then there's going to be tension every time I pick my kids up or drop them off or that sort of awkward energy whenever we're all in the same place at the same time, like at one of my son's hockey games or something like that. That was the story that immediately came to mind of how I was supposed to behave, think, and act. And I considered that even in that really low, low place. And my reaction was, that's stupid. Why the hell would I want to live like that? And so, I chose differently. I'm not saying that it was really easy at first. It wasn't, but it got easier. I'm fortunate that they also chose the same thing. Let's get along. Let's work together. Let's actually work toward having a really good, solid friendship and co-parenting partnership. And that's what we have. And I have all sorts of people in the years since then that say, oh, Kevin, that's so amazing that you guys are the way you are. I could never be like that. I wish I could be like you, like it's some great big humanitarian effort that, that I've put forth or they've put forth. <laughs> Two things. You can. You just have to choose to be. So if you're not, it's because you've chosen not to be. And the second thing is, it's not a great big humanitarian effort. It was selfish. I decided I didn't want to feel bad. So I was going to make choices and act in a certain way that gave me the best chance to feel good. So it's no different with this. Blue Monday, you're supposed to be depressed. It's the most depressing day of the year. Says who? If you decide to believe that, that's your choice. Do you know what a self-fulfilling prophecy is? Look it up. So when you start to become aware of stuff like this and how now we've got companies that are taking it and marketing it, 
just be aware of it. Because if you can see what's going on and realize that you have the power to choose and feel a different way, a better way, and yet you still choose to go the route that makes you feel worse, now that's depressing.